Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the broadcast. We are super excited to be here with you guys. It's going to be an amazing night. We already have 3,000 people on, so just don't worry. The view count will it'll catch up. It's a little bit behind because the chat's going crazy. We have all the chat mixed on one screen right here, and so it's, it's just exploding right now. So everyone, welcome in. We have a lot of exciting stuff to cover, not a ton of time to do it. A lot of good stuff we're going to talk about. Let us know in the comments of all pages. I think we're on... 13 pages right now. So if you don't like us, take a night off from the internet because we pretty much are taking over YouTube and Facebook tonight. But let us know in the comments where you guys are watching from. We appreciate all of you that are watching and it's the middle of the night. Like guys, can you believe this? People are waking up at one in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning to watch these broadcasts live. And if you are that person, we love you and appreciate you. We know it's a sacrifice, but it'll be worth your time tonight. We won't go like four or five hours and keep you up to the morning, but it's going to be a powerful time of deliverance of just what God is doing. So I want to open it up as well for while we get people in here. Is there any events that you guys have coming up or anything you guys are going to be preaching at traveling that you guys might want to announce before we get started? Yeah, next week, um, I'm going to be in Long Island. So those of you that are in Long Island, I will be at Dr. Aretha Wilson's church for the yearly raw conference so if you guys need some deliverance and you're in the uh, greater new york area in the area of long island new york meet me out there the information is on my facebook and social media uh, uh, pages and um i look forward to seeing you guys that'll be next week february 16th through the 18th awesome and i have all your stuff linked in the description so if you guys are looking for any of the links they're all linked in the description anyone else have any events they want to just shout out before while we get people in here yeah i'll be I like a fun one Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Daniel. No, no, I was going to say I'll, I have a three-day revival in San Diego, California at Church Sid Canoe. And, hey. Um, yeah. So all the information is on the website, supernaturallife.org. You can find out where I'm at, the address and everything. But uh, three days out there, and I don't know if anybody's watching from Thailand, but next week I'll be <laughs> heading to Thailand for two weeks to bring the wow. Thai people the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm excited. Wow, from San Diego to Thailand. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow, Pastor that's Mike, crazy. Where, where are we'll you going to be, be praying at? for you? I got a fun one. So pastors Vlad and Lana are going to be coming out to New York City February 17th. We're doing a marriage conference. It's going to be off the charts. But here's the good news for everybody. If you go to MikeSignorelli.com, you can hit events because we have multiple physical locations you can attend across the United States. And we are also going to be streaming it online if you register. So go to MikeSignorelli.com, hit events, and then uh, sign up for the marriage conference. It's going to be awesome. Mm. Awesome, awesome. Pastor Greg, you got anything you want to shout out? Anything you want to announce? Well, this weekend is our dedication for the brand new tent at Global Vision. So we're excited about that. We get people coming in from all over. And we're going to do something that I think is pretty historical. We're giving out 1,200 uh, chapters of the Bible. There's 1,189, 1,200 chapters, 1,200 people. And we are going to take 20 minutes and out loud read the entire Bible under the tent at one time. Come Every on. chapter of the Bible will be read by one of 1,200 people. And so as they're dying out, it'll get quieter and quieter and quieter. And then I'll get up and finish with the last chapter of Revelation. So we're going to take 20 minutes and read the whole Bible under the tent to dedicate that thing. That is so cool. And now is the new oh. tent going to be bigger? Because when I went to your other tent, I'm like, there's no way you could get bigger than this. This is the biggest tent in the history of the world. It, it can get bigger. It's it's the same size dimensions, but it feels bigger for two reasons. Number one, the, the two big sides are way bigger. So when we have the deliverance conference, we can put aluminum bleachers in it and get a thousand wow. more people in it and it's also clear span there's no poles in it it's like a cage so it has trussing and so we're able to seat people where the poles used to go so it, it made a lot of difference that is amazing get to the tent pastor vlad anything you got going no i'm just uh pastor with pastor mike we're gonna be in two weeks but um i'll be home this sunday and next sunday preaching i know a lot of people usually drive uh trying to find make sure that i'm home i'm so i'm spending more time at home now on the weekends at home uh, uh, preaching on Sunday. So if you're nearby Tri-Cities, Washington, uh, Sunday, 8, 10, and 12, uh, come on over. I have a couple of things in California. I have February 19th at Lifesong Church. That's my home church, 8, 15, 9, 30, 11, and 12, 30. That's February 19th. And then February 25th, I will be in Antioch, California. And that's a Saturday. Doors open at 5, 30. You get there early because it's going to be full. It's going to be a really good time. Okay. 
We're gonna jump into this guys. We have several thousand people here. We have a lot to cover We're gonna talk a lot about the movie answer your guys's questions I would like to quickly just like 30 seconds each if you guys don't mind introducing who you are because The entire chat the whole time will say who's this who's that so Pagani if you want to start and then I'll go Pastor Mike Pastor Greg Pastor Vlad and Daniel could end it there. Um, that would be awesome. Just introduce who you are well, blessings, everyone. This is uh, Alexander Pagani. I'm the lead pastor of Amazing Church Global in the South Bronx, New York City. Awesome. My name is Isaiah Saldivar. If you're on my page, then you see my name on the page. Um, I help at a local church out here in California. I full-time live stream and I travel about once a month. 12 years ago, as an atheist. I got radically saved. Here I am now. Uh, that's me. Go ahead, Pastor Mike. Hey, I'm Pastor Mike Signorelli coming at you from New York City. I'm the lead pastor of V1 Church, and I've trained over 6,000 breakers in deliverance, Come evangelism, on. healing, yeah. and uh, sharing the gospel. Amen. Pastor Greg Locke, Global Vision Bible Church, Mount Juliet, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. Uh, pastor Vlad with um, Hungry Generation in Tri-Cities, Washington. I like to eat country to popular opinion who think and that fast I, all I do is. is fast yeah uh we I just released a fast forward book but our church is called hungry generation and i i love food <laughs> you're hungry jen because you guys are always hungry you're always fasting over there every time i see your page you're like we're doing another 35 day church fast i'm like these guys never eat praise the lord hungry daniel go for it yeah, Daniel Adams here, founder of the Supernatural Life Global Movement, letting Jesus be known throughout all the earth, and I also like to eat too. <laughs> well, listen guys, we have some heavy hitters on here. I want to just say this, I honor all of you guys here tremendously. Your time is extremely valuable. I think it's actually pretty crazy that we all get together at the same time live on a podcast just to get guys of your caliber together at once is just hard to do. And so I want to honor you guys. You guys have always been so willing to get together to talk about controversial hard topics like deliverance which we're going to talk about some of the criticism tonight but before we do all of that one of the main goals we have for tonight is to talk about something you guys are going to hear about non-stop i've been talking about it non-stop every stream people are like will you stop talking about it no we will not stop talking about it we have a full length movie coming yeah. out on march 13th at 7 well for me at 7 p.m i believe it's it's similar times all throughout the united states so we want to answer you guys questions about the movie coming out all of us are in the movie and so many of us are getting lots of contacted from lots of pastors let's just say that would never ordinarily contact us because they see oh you have a movie coming out in 2000 theaters so pastor greg i'd love for you to talk about the movie how did this even start most people don't know what's going on like how did how are you guys getting a deliverance movie in theaters because it from my understanding this is the first time this type of movie has ever been in this many secular theaters so i'd love to give you the mic and just share how the movie came about the logistics of it maybe even some of the nerdy stuff people don't know about the movie and then we'll go into some of the questions and we'll play the trailer whenever you feel ready. We're going to also play the trailer in a little bit here. Absolutely. It is super historical. And even Fathom Events that's doing all of our PR directives and things, they're like, well, we underestimated the hunger and thirst for such a subject. They said, we, we had no idea that this many people were this interested. And I'm like, look at the Grammys. Look at Satanism yes. taking over in the mainstream media. And right now we're going to push back against the prince of the power of the air. We were going to do a small documentary just after the original Deliverance Conference when I kind of really started meeting some of you guys. And I told Wayne, I said, I wonder what would happen if we really, Pastor Vlad, fasted and prayed and asked the Lord to put us in just, just a handful of movie theaters. What would that look like? And it wasn't three weeks later. We had been contacted by Fathom and Iconic. And to make a long story short, they were kind of going back and forth and they were they were fighting a little bit and saying, we want it. No, we want it. And I'm like, I can't believe we have people fighting Come over on. a movie that's not even well scripted yet. And once, once we started putting it together and you guys came back again for the New Year's and we had everything we needed from the original conference through this last one, it just began to come together so well. Uh, actually, tonight, I'm going to watch what we call the final, final cut. It's 99.99.99% finished. And so by midnight tonight, if there are any little bitty idiosyncrasies that need to be tweaked, I've got to tell them tonight by midnight. And so I'm going to watch it again. I've watched the final cut a couple of times, and I'm telling you, not only the amount of time that everybody is in it kind of woven and spun throughout, but the the arcs are beautiful. It begins with my journey 
uh, from cessationism, you know, first my salvation, how I got to the church and you know my Baptist roots, and then all of a sudden how the Lord got me into deliverance, then the girl in the baptistry, and then all of a sudden the original deliverance conference, and then Daniel and him reaching out to Mike and Mike reaching out to the others. And then there's a there's a fantastic part, one of my favorite parts. Pagani kind of looks into the camera. He's like, we sent Vlad as a spy to Global Vision. <laughs> and then from there we go to Atlanta, and it just shows the True whole story. connection of Daniel's conference and how it comes together. And then from there, just the revival of deliverance. And it shows various, you know, deliverances happening. It is, it's stupendous. I mean, it is phenomenal the way these guys have woven this story together, given everybody so much time. And yet right in 90 minutes, I mean, it's, there's really no breathing room. It kind of starts bombastically, goes bombastically. And when it ends, you're like, is that it? There's got to be more, right? I mean, it just it's so powerful Part and two. it's so emotional. And then we get to do from there the mass deliverance right after after the credit scene. And so, boom, we go, you know, come out in Jesus' name. We get to really do it. So not only are we sharing the gospel, we're going to see people repent and believe the gospel in the movie theaters. And then we get to go to full-blown 30 minutes of nothing but deliverance on Fathom's nickel. They're allowing us to do this. And they are like, blown away that so many people are excited by this. They had somebody on there today that runs a Catholic PR firm, and they said that the the exorcism people in Catholicism are so interested in this movie that they're like selling out <laughs> in wow. the Catholic venues. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. The African-American community has taken to it like wildfire. And, you know, because in the black church, they've always believed in deliverance. They've always mm. believed in the supernatural. And we are seeing so many of those churches come over. So we're selling out all over. And so I know people are like, oh, we can't buy tickets. We can't buy tickets. I promise you we're adding dates. We're adding times. We're adding theaters. Just keep at it. And we're going to keep putting the link in the uh, in the description on our pages. We need you to go get these tickets. Because Fathom said, if we will have another week this week, like last week, then we're a shoe in for multiple days, absolutely without a doubt. And and just just to be frank, and they're going to put this in one of their one of their PR releases. Uh, they said that they have never, and they emphasized never put out a movie uh, that Fathom has ever had their stamp of approval on that have sold this many tickets a month before the Come movie. Come on, actually so Come on. The glory, guys. This is the wow. this is the new pulpit right here. This is the high tech redneck pulpit. We are going to reach the nation. We're going to reach the nation with deliverance ministry and the message of Jesus. I'm I'm super excited and I'm humbled that you guys are a part of it. And you're a big part of it, as you're going to see. It's beautiful. I want to make sure, too, we have the links to get the tickets in the description and in the comments. But also, I've been giving out the website, too. It's comeoutinjesusname.com. If you go yep. directly to that website, you can get tickets. Now, what I don't want you guys to do is all year long, we cry about what the devil's doing. And now we're putting out a movie to help people overcome the enemy, and you just don't go. So we yep. need to get engaged with this. We need to put our money where our mouth is. If we've been shouting about this and saying we need deliverance in the church. And guys, is it safe to say we are in a deliverance revival in America right now? Like, God is doing something special in America. The devil is getting a whooping. I mean, that's that's the best way I could say it, the nice way I can say it. Right now, deliverance is breaking out. I know there's been pastors that are skeptical. There's been criticism we'll talk about tonight. But at the end of the day, when I saw everything going on, which you all know, if you don't know, what's going on at the Grammys and how satanic, they said it was the most satanic Grammys that's ever happened, which who cares? I mean, I don't watch the Grammys. Who cares about secular things? But it's a picture of what the devil is doing. This movie is such perfect timing because it's a direct yeah. confrontation against what's happening at the Grammys. The devil is flexing his arm and we March 13th at 7 p.m. are flexing back saying the devil is a liar. We have come to destroy the works of darkness. We are not going to be afraid. We are not going to hide our light. We are not going to cower back. If the Grammys can do a satanic ritual on stage, we could bring deliverance to 2,000 movie theaters all over America. We are believing that deliverance will be viral in the American church. We're believing that you guys and now let me please challenge you guys tonight. You guys will go to your pastor and say, we need to get on board with this. Forget about yes. what you think about any of us guys on the screen. This is what Jesus is doing. Deliverance is happening. This is Jesus's ministry, not ours. And so pastor, get on board. Go buy a theater. Go get yes. tickets. Go get your church. It's Monday night. 
You have nothing going on at the church. It's your day off. Get your church together and set, buy out a theater. Call the theater and say, I want to buy every yeah. single ticket. We're bringing our church. Will you please open multiple? If you guys start putting pressure on the theaters, they'll start opening up more showtimes and more things like that. I want to, I want you guys to jump in here. What are you guys expecting from this movie? What are some of the expectations you guys have? And maybe something that you think you're believing for God to do through this entire uh, movie coming out. Well, b before we get into that, I want to encourage those of you um, that have tried to purchase tickets and it's sold out in a theater near you. Guys, don't take it as a sign that, well, I guess I'm just going to wait for it to come out on DVD. Find some friends, get in a car and drive to the, yes. ne the next nearest theater that has tickets available. I'm hearing a lot of people saying, well, I went to the theater and it sold out. I guess I'll just wait for the DVD to come out or wait for it to come out online. No, no. Gather some friends, get together, get a car pulled together and go to the nearest theater that you have that you know that there are tickets available. So I want to make sure that everyone understands. Don't give up so easy. Don't give up so easy and don't get over spiritual. Like, I guess God don't want me to go because the tickets have been sold out. He doesn't want me to go. No, he wants you to go. He wants you to go. Just go to another theater and keep searching until you find it. All right. Yeah, so that's so what I wanted good. to say before we kind of go on. It's a lot of people giving up and we don't want you to give up. Get to a nearest theater and, 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 and purchase a ticket. It's awesome. And I a lot of those it. theaters are going to add other times. And some of them yeah. already started to add other times. And if the people will go, like Isaiah said, and put pressure on them, they will. And just, just go and say, hey, look, we got 20 extra people. They'll open up another box. They absolutely will. Uh, I've even noticed just from a casual perusal, there's a number of them. They're doing 701, 705, 720, 730. People are opening up other boxes because it's selling so quickly. And so don't give up. Like Pagani said, don't give up. Go, go, go. And I'm telling you, God's going to use this unbelievably. I want to add something as well, and then maybe this will spark something for some conversation for you guys too. I want you guys to go see this movie and don't go as if you're going to be entertained or even trained or equipped, but go realizing God's going to use you in the theater. Like literally, if you go see this movie in theaters, understand that God wants to use you as a deliverer at the end of the movie, you stand yes. up and say, is there anyone in this theater that needs prayer? I'll pray for you because we're going to do that in our theater. We have, uh, I'm so grateful, one of the largest theaters in our area is going to be opening up with the movie, 350 seats, which is like a massive theater. Most of them theaters out here seat like 30 to 50, 350. And you know what we're going to do at the end of it? We're going to get up and say, whoever needs deliverance, we're going to have it break out and we're going to pray for you. And so I'm believing that these will be 2000 altar calls all throughout yeah. America, people standing up and saying, I'm going to do deliverance right now. Who needs it? Come get it. And there will be, and that's really one of our goals for this movie is we want to see the power of God displayed in the movie theaters. And so just get ready, movie theater workers, to go in there yeah. and people will be throwing up everywhere. Keep your popcorn bucket. <laughs> keep your popcorn bucket. Yeah, when, you're done, when you're done keep eating the bucket. the bucket, keep the bucket and use that to throw up in when you get delivered because you're going to need it. I'm telling you right now. Any thoughts you guys have on this? Yeah, I wanted to say this. This is a very powerful evangelism tool. There are people yes. who will not go to a church, but they mm -hmm. will go to the movie theater with you. They don't know that you're going to hijack it and do deliverance, and they're going to end up puking in the popcorn bucket. But you need to invite them, extend that invitation, and watch God do what only he can do. V1 Church has already taken over four theater locations from California to New York City, Come we're on. Gonna, including Chicagoland. We're, we're filling up more, but we are primarily inviting lost people to watch this. You know, Matthew chapter five talks about us being salt and light. Come on. And so this movie is going to provoke hunger and thirst in people and a desire inside of them. And it, it's going to spark an opportunity like never before. So I, I don't think any one of us can calculate the totality of what God is going to do, but just get ready for tens of thousands of testimonies. Matter of fact, I want to say one last thing. Also understand when we talk about deliverance, there is casting out the spirit of infirmity, which means that there are going to be medically verifiable miracles and supernatural healing. And that's a part of deliverance. And so somebody might come in the handicap section and leave not needing it anymore Come on. after this movie. Come on. Mm -hmm. Bring your unsafe friends. Say, we're going to go watch yeah, a movie yeah. about casting out demons. They're going to be like, what? And then, boom, they're going to get saved and delivered right there in the theater. Amen. You yeah. know, I think that the darkness that we see right now, what happened on Sunday, what's happening with our culture, it's only getting darker. And, yep. you know, we're not just going to be making videos about how dark things are and cursing the darkness, criticizing the darkness. And... I appreciate that uh, Pastor Greg 
as well as all of us are rallying around this is because in Isaiah 60, it says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. And deliverance is the light. It's the light in the darkness because deliverance is the only thing that pretty much confronts the demonic agenda. Come on. And so to be able to go into the theaters and bring the light. I mean, and we watched a little bit of the clips from this um, docu from this documentary. And it will not only have Pastor Greg's story and our stories, but it will have, especially toward the end, people's stories of how they were delivered. And I believe that God's going to use this to set the captives free. And it's the people's minds are going to be open as when people go to theaters and sometimes they get demons um people will go to theaters and i believe that they will experience deliverance Come on. as people get delivered by watching sometimes our videos and same thing will happen there so i'm really excited for that our church is excited um unfortunately we don't have a lot of theaters nearby so like on sunday before i even got up to mention it all the tickets were already um sold out an hour away so most mm. of us are going to be driving about two hours away um to watch it in spokane but we're really excited and we're praying we're going to be fasting as well that the yeah. holy spirit is going to really spark something that it will have lasting fruit in people's lives that people will begin to remember that 10 years ago as people you know sometimes will say that they actually got demons watching an exorcist movie and right. people will say i came to that movie Come on. theater and Come on. things came out of me uh, yeah. that i had because distance is not a barrier deliverance can happen at a distance jesus drove out a demon from a oh, from yes. a girl at a distance so god can use this to drive out demons out of people at a distance so good daniel you want to jump in here at all yeah i just wanted to say i believe this movie is going to shake the very foundation of how church has been done i think yeah. uh i think because a bunch of the congregants of many of these pastors kind of like you know pastor greg Locke being changed completely by his praying church and by how his wife came on board and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think that that same thing is going to happen by this movie because that's in your DNA. What happened to you is your testimony. And I believe this is going to bleed down in a good way into these, into this. And it's going to go into the Baptist congregations. It's going to go into the Methodists and the Calvinists and all these people. It's going to get in there and it's going to change the very dynamic and foundation of how church is done because nobody's going to be able to fight it anymore. You're not going to yeah, be able to say on. deliverance mm -hmm. ain't real because it's going to be in the movie theaters amongst everybody every denomination every type of person ain't nobody going to be able to say hey demons aren't real they can't this isn't christians can't have demons all that conversation is going to go out the window now because it's going to be happening on a mass scale so i believe it's also going to be the open door for deliverance to no longer just be tolerated but it's going to start to be celebrated within the church and of course you know we'll still have kickback here and there but i do believe it's going to ch it's going to change the very foundation of uh, the church in a good way, in a good way. Obviously, the foundation is Jesus, but it's going to shake it up. So that's what I believe is going to happen. So good. You guys want to show the 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 um, trailer? Everyone in the chat is like, let's see it. What What is it? We're going to show the trailer, guys. Everyone, if you're looking down, put your face to the screen here. We're going to play the trailer here quickly for you. In the New Testament, is it verifiable that Christians can be attacked and oppressed by demons? Come on. God used controversy. Look, I'm on the list. He used CNN. He used the media. He used all of it to grow a massive size platform. Controversy built our platform. Two genders. It was never about the controversy. It was never about the politics. I thought it was. I thought it was about Trump. I thought it was about COVID. But God built our platform for deliverance. We are headed more into seeing prophecy fulfilled before our very eyes. There's a kingdom of righteousness and there's a kingdom of darkness. Something in our being craves something supernatural. If you're addicted to something, you have company. And he said in the last days, the church will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. They will begin to listen to demonic doctrines. He doesn't mind you going to church. He doesn't mind you praising as long as you don't change. There's a great awakening that is coming. Jesus. The kingdom of God is not about talk. Jesus is king. It's about power and demonstration. The state of the church in the United States, I believe, needs a reawakening of deliverance because of the evil that's going around. Christians can be under the influence of satanic oppression. 100% they can. You see, redemption and salvation is for the lost. Deliverance 
is to set the captives free. The word of God says, these signs shall follow them that believe. The plan of the enemy is to keep the church quiet. Deliverance is for the people of God. Deliverance is for the church. I'm here to call this culture to Jesus Christ and cast out demons. Because these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. Ladies and gentlemen, if that did not get you fired up, if that did not get you excited, I don't know what will. Man, that was powerful. Mm. Go ahead, Pastor Greg. You want to say anything? Yeah, let me say this. You know, first of all, you don't get in movie theaters with just little claymation videos, right? This is not a small budgeted type of thing. The Lord did this. It was unbelievable how he provided the funds necessary for this. It is very, very professional. It's very well done. But here's the thing that people need to understand. This is going to cause people in churches to ask their pastors a lot of questions, Come and their on. pastor better be ready to answer them because here's what they're expecting. They're expecting a hokey, charismaniac, crazy movie that has no theological meat to it whatsoever, and that Come is on. not this movie. This is a movie that is going to be very hard to defend because it's so full of Scripture. It is so weaved together with the gospel because— if you guys are like me, people tell me what I believe in deliverance ministry. Well, this Come is what on. you believe. And I'm like, don't tell me what I believe about deliverance. I know what the Bible says. And it is so absolutely woven and packed full of scripture that by the time the thing's over with, at the end of the credits, pastors are going to be like, I'm fighting against the Bible. Mm. I'm literally fighting against the ministry of Jesus. And so every one of you in this movie, although there are theological experiences and people will see you actually, you know, casting out evil spirits. You guys come across, I come across, we all come across as men who very well know the Bible. We're not mm. uneducated hillbillies that don't know anything about the word of God. Okay. And so we're not just some one-off group of people that don't theologically understand the text. We know the Bible and it's going to come through and people are going to go to their pastors and be like, uh, I thought you said these guys were heretics. When what I just saw was verse by verse, line by line, word by word, gospel by gospel, and there's no way that they're going to be able to pick it apart. And so people can say, well, you know, there's that new movie, American Gospel. Look, I don't care what people say. This is going to bring some cessationists out of cessationism. I Come promise on. you it is. Come, Come on. on. And I love what you said there because I think people think we love deliverance because we don't love the Bible. But the reason we love deliverance is because we love the Bible. People are like, yeah, oh, just yeah, focus yeah. on Jesus. I'm like, the problem is that Jesus we're focusing on focused on deliverance. He's the one that told us and they shall cast out demons. So the, the beauty of this whole movie and what we're talking about in the Demon Slayer podcast is we are talking about something that Jesus did everywhere he went. Not a minor. Jesus did not minor on deliverance. This was a major part of his ministry as ambassadors with the Bible says we are ambassadors of Christ as his representatives on the earth we've been given like one guy made a video recently he's like Isaiah Saldivar claims that he has authority over demons and the whole comments were like get, quoting the scripture where Jesus said I've given you authority now over serpents and scorpions it's like no the Bible says that Isaiah doesn't say that Greg Vlad Daniel Mike Pagani don't doesn't say that Jesus said I've given yeah. you this power and this authority so we are doing this because we're standing on the word of God and the bottom line is deliverance is what Jesus told the disciples to go do. He commanded them. He didn't say, well, if you feel like it, you know, if you're really excited about me, he said, go cast out devils. This is needed. It's necessary. If the Grammys thing didn't wake some of you up to be like, wow, this is very blatant. America needs this movie. America needs us to do deliverance. This is perfect timing to give the yes. devil a black eye. And I'm praying that this cultural revolution in Hollywood of the devil being cool is going to bring the church a time of wake up, a time of sobering up. I hope the church would start sobering up and saying, okay, it's time to stop patty caking, get out of our coffee shops and restaurants and donut bars and start realizing that now's the time for warfare. We are enlisting you guys as the army of Christ in these last days. Somebody else jump in because I don't want to hog up the mic here tonight. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about, you know, there's going to be such a massive awakening with the Christian, with Christian believers in the idea of deliverance that I think that an army of deliverance workers are 
come out of this movie theater that is going to be literally unstoppable. And I think it's going to be the heaven's pushback for the satanic onslaught that's yep. been attacking this country. It's going to be God raising up deliverance ministers everywhere in every state pushing back the forces of darkness, man. So I'm just I'm just thinking mm. about it. It's, I think this is a, a lot more prophetic and um, yeah, Holy a Ghost of heaven <laughs> you're really thinking about. Like this thing really is a re, an army recruitment of, of, of an awakening of, I'm telling you, the, bulb, the light bulbs mm. are going to go off all over the country. Not only all over the country, when it does hit DVD and then it starts going all over the world, yeah. You can forget about it, man. I really do feel sorry for the devil, man. Like it's Come gonna on. be nonstop. It's gonna be nonstop. So good. I wanted to ask you also, Pastor Greg. A lot of people, and I'm trying to monitor the questions coming in the chat, are is this appropriate for kids? And if the answer is yes, what is the age group you'd recommend? We obviously haven't seen the movie. You've seen the movie. I, I can't answer it just because I haven't seen the movie, but what are your thoughts on children seeing this movie? Very age appropriate for anybody. Uh, they have us an NR, a uh, not rated, and so that makes the description say that it can have some profanity or nudity, of which it doesn't have either of those. But we have no control over that. But it's very age appropriate. There's not anything scary. I mean, yeah, there's a few people screaming or throwing up or whatever. But the movie's not consistent about that. Uh, those dramatic parts, right? It's the okay. build up, understanding, deliverance itself. And, and not just a lot of flamboyance, right? And I think that people think all it is is casting out demons the whole time. People just run around screaming. No, it's building up why it's important, what the Bible mm. actually said, says about it. Here's how it works. It's not nearly as dramatic as you're thinking. It's different for everybody. And so there may be a few intense parts that would be PG-13, but it's very age appropriate for anyone. And so I would highly encourage, get your kids there, get your grandparents there. But number one, get your pastor there because it's going to change his life. And I would say too, use like it all depends on the maturity of your kid. There's 12 year olds that act like five year olds and five year olds that act like 12 year olds. So if your kid is scared of everything and maybe on the more immature side, then maybe that would be something to use discretion and say, ah, oh, they're probably, you know, this probably wouldn't be a good movie for them. But I would just say use your discretion as well if you're bringing kids just to make sure, you know, we use discretion. And then I also wanted to ask, will there be, I know this is so soon to ask, but the chat won't stop asking, will there be a part two in any time in the future here? On. If that's what the Lord wants, we'll do a part two. We'll do a part three. I mean, there's a Netflix documentary that's coming out called uh, Exorcism in America. Did the devil make me do it? And our church is kind of like the main star of that. And so there will be, you know, a Netflix follow up, but it's it's not ours, for example. I mean, I'm in it a lot and I kind of end it with the gospel and with deliverance. But as far as, you know, lock media producing something, absolutely. I mean, the sky's the limit. I never thought we would get in any theaters. And here we are having this discussion with you guys. You know, Isaiah's talking about how it's it's hard to get everybody on the, on a call that has to be of the Lord. Can you imagine getting everybody on the same movie in the Come same on. studio? That was a miracle uh, in and of itself. And, and here we all are. And more, you know, Leon and other people and Henry Schaefer that are in it that can't be on the call. But I'm telling you, we'll, we'll do part 10 if we have to. But what I'm thinking is that this is going to be, this is going to be the trumpet. This is the clarion call. Not because we're making it, not because we're in it. I'm telling you, it is going to be a movie that people are going to have a hard time walking away and denying the reality of it. It is so that good. powerful. And it's that it's that clear. It's that simplistic. And I tell people every week in mass deliverance, it's so simple it should never work, but it always works because it's simple. Mm. And the simple messages come out in Jesus' name. And come people on. are gonna hear it, they're gonna see it, and they're gonna experience it. I love it. Last question I'll ask you, and then I'll move into some of the criticisms we're going to talk about. The last question is, how could we see if it were international? Obviously, a lot of people that follow all of our ministries are not from the United States. As of right now, just so you guys know, it is going to be around 2,000 theaters throughout the United States and different states, different cities, obviously. But right now, it's not international. How could they see if they're international? Do they need to wait? What is your, what is your take on that? Within two weeks, Fathom will let us know. They actually, on a call today, said that they have so many requests right now in Canada that they'll probably release it kind of into Canada first. But they said uh, Canada, UK, and uh, South Africa, which would work good for uh, Leon's crew, right? And uh, so yes. they're, they're going to put it in several English-speaking countries. As long as it does super well here, I'm pretty sure they're going to release it. And I've had a lot of people ask me, uh, even Australia as well, so a, a good number of places.
I love it. Awesome. Okay, guys, I want to move into just for a few moments here. Let's talk about some of the criticism. Obviously, we don't stray away from criticism. We're not afraid of the criticism. We know people are going to say things. People are going to talk. So I kind of just listed a few things that constantly come in the chat that we all constantly get asked. And I would love to hear your guys' take on these. I think me and Daniel are the only ones that aren't senior pastors here. So we have four senior pastors here. So this is a great time to ask this question. Many people want to know, I want to get involved in deliverance ministry. I want to cast a devil. I'm definitely going to go see the movie, but how do I talk to my pastor about deliverance? My pastor doesn't preach on deliverance. He doesn't do deliverance. He doesn't like maybe deliverance. Um, how would you guys say coming from senior pastors? I, I guess we're not looking for like a crazy theological answer, but coming from like pastors, Pastor Greg, you have a fresh story of, you know, just a, two years ago, you weren't even in deliverance at all. What do you guys think about congregants that want to do deliverance and see it happen but at the same time they also want to honor their senior pastor i know it's a hard criticism a hard question but maybe jump in here and give us some of your thoughts here let me give a 10 second answer because i want to hear these guys and that's it books impacted me so much that if mm. i would have had this movie i would have been in deliverance a whole lot quicker i'm telling you if you can get your pastor to with an open heart and mind go watch this movie it is so well done there's no way he could deny the reality of the ministry of jesus get your pastor there and i promise you he's going to start looking in the area of deliverance there's no way around it i'm convinced of that it's awesome i would um also buy him a book and give him a thousand dollars <laughs> are you being serious i'm like i can't I mean, tell or you just like, or give not. him a give him a gift and say hey just read three chapters or something and there are plenty of books on deliverance i know that's how a uh, few pastors came and there's one guy he i remember he was trying to uh, give me a book to to read on something about raising a young generation in the church and i was like man i got like 20 books i need to read i don't have time and so and he challenged me he said if you don't read past um one chapter he says i will give you a uh, hundred bucks because he's like this is how powerful it's going to be so of course i'm not gonna you know ask you for a hundred bucks i don't care about that but that just kind of stirred stirred my appetite so i put it in as my first book start reading an introduction and it really impacted me and so i think that what pastor greg mentioned is that a lot of times movies or books because they might be afraid to go to a movie so they're not seen as like being curious but you can give them a book and that could spark a conversation um, but sooner or later i think the time is coming and the time is here because of the paganism of our culture yes. you will not be able to do ministry um, in the united states in the west and everywhere else if you don't cast out demons because people who are coming to our church we're not dealing with christian culture anymore we're dealing with post-christian culture that is full of demons and so it's it's becoming everywhere right now where people need uh deliverance and so i would just give them book it's awesome here's a crazy prayer you know um nothing nothing changes uh a pastor's theology than god throwing them in a fight mm -hmm. uh, you know um i i would say the same thing happened for me like it happened to pastor greg is heavenly father throw my pastor in a fight lord mm. Get him in the middle of, in the middle lord send us someone who authentically needs to get deliverance and make it happen and and let lord use my pastor um to help them get set free and awaken that desire in my pastor, lord so that way um they could they could at least at least go back home and say lord what happened there and 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 your pastor begins to pray and ask the lord okay god what happened today in the service you know and and god begins to work on them you know like it worked for me it worked for pastor greg you know and now i'm not saying lord you guys know exactly what i mean lord yeah. give my pastor an opportunity to see the need to set the captives free by bringing us, Lord, in this house, someone who needs to get set free that will require my pastor to roll up their sleeves and help this person get set free. And Lord, awaken them, awaken them to helping set the captives free as part of the benefit package mm -hmm. of the gospel, salvation, healing, and deliverance. That's so good. That's so good. You know, I, I want to take it one step deeper. As soon as I posted up that movie poster on my social media platforms, my phone rang off the hook for the last week. And, you know, I mentor a lot of pastors nationwide. And here's the thing. It really listening to them throughout this week has changed my perspective. Here's what I heard over and over and over again. 
I heard, Mike, I want to do deliverance in my church. I don't know how to get started. I don't know what to do. I have the desire. Give me the strategy. Give me the wisdom. How do I do it? So, you know, I used to think that pastors didn't want to do deliverance. Wow. I think that there are many pastors who do, but don't know how to start. Now, I want to challenge all of those pastors watching right now, because what, Pagan, what Apostle Pagani just said was, God, throw him in the fight. What I know will happen in most churches is that pastor will find the person in their congregation who they think knows how to do deliverance, and they'll throw them in the fight. Mm -hmm. And that's what I keep hearing over and over. These pastors are saying, you know, I've got this person in my church, and they'll do deliverance. I got this person in my church. No, you, pastor, you are the person in your church to do it. Yes. It starts with you, and then because discipleship is you go first, and you lead by example. And so don't, de don't defer the, here's what they're going to do, Pastor Greg. They're going to watch the movie, and I, I'm telling you, I'm trying to get up ahead of it now, and they're going to say, yeah, we'll do deliverance back in the back room. Mm -hmm. Sister so-and-so is going to do it, and then we'll be able to say we do deliverance because we shoved it in the corner. Deliverance, mm -hmm. the way Jesus did it, was out in the open, in the public view. It's not something that he hid. And so if you're going to do biblical deliverance, you're not going to shove it in the corner and you're not going to relegate it to sister so-and-so. Matter of fact, you're going to man up, you're going to be her Come pastor, on. and you're going to show her that you're ready to step into it. And and that's, I, I don't know, I had to, I waited the whole podcast tonight to say that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and I want to also give this advice to pastors is don't let the people run your church. Don't let them, because yeah. they say, pastors say, I want to do deliverance, but I'm afraid of what the people, why are you afraid of the people? You're the pastor. If you're worried about the people, uh -oh. you should not be leading them. They should be leading you. You should not be the shepherd. So I think there's times where you have to say, this is what we're doing. And some of you pastors think your church is going to freak out, but they've actually been waiting for you to man up and do yeah. this. They've actually been watching our podcasts, watching our streams. They're, they've been waiting for you to get up on Sunday and say, today we're going to start in Mark 1, and we're going to talk about how Jesus is first... Oh day in the synagogue he cast a demon out of a man and we're going to break this down start with jesus go into his stories and bring this to your congregation because here's the thing your congregations they have children that are suicidal that are depressed that have every mental illness you can right. think of they have co-workers and cousins and aunts and uncles that have every demon under the sun and they've been waiting for their pastor not a hireling their shepherd to say, this is what we do to the wolf. This is how we fight the battle. This is what we do. So you might be surprised when you get up on Sunday morning and say, I'm, I'm the first one to repent. I've neglected this topic. I haven't talked about this. I apologize to my congregation, but we're going to start going into spiritual warfare. We're going to be the church that Jesus called us to be. The gates of hell shall not prevail against this church. So I really want to challenge you, follow the cloud, not the crowd. Don't let the people yeah. lead you. Be the pastor. Don't be a jellyfish. Get, man up. Get that backbone and say, this is where we're going. The Lord is showing me this. This is where we're going. And I'm telling you, your people are going to be excited. They're going to say, oh, we've been waiting for it. We've been waiting for this. We've been for years praying for this. And so I really would challenge you. Uh, don't get... Don't go up to your pastor and say, oh, you're not saved because you don't believe in deliverance and all the guys I follow online believe in deliverance. That's not the right way to get someone's attention. I always tell people, come with humility. Go and say, hey, pastor, this is like, I've been really studying the ministry of Jesus. I see him cast out demons a lot. Maybe is there a reason why we don't do this or would you be interested in looking into this? Here's a book, buy them the book. Don't tell them to buy it. Buy it on Amazon, two day shipping and bring it to them. Say, please, would you just check out this book? Apostle Alexander Pagani has an amazing book, The Secrets to yeah. Deliverance on Amazon. Like yours truly right here next to me has a book. You could literally hand your pastor the book and ask him to look into it. Again, humility. Humility, come humbly yeah. and say, this is what I felt God has called me to do. Anyone want to, else want to add to that before we move to the next thing? Good advice. Let me, just, let, me, let me just say this briefly. As a pastor of a multi-site national church, I listen to people differently who faithfully sow and faithfully Come serve on. that have fruit that remains that are, that are, at, you know what I'm saying? Like yes. it's a lot of times what happens is the least involved people become the most critical. And so, so the thing about it is, it's like, if you've been faithful wow, and you're actually that. building that house, you're sowing, mm -hmm. you're serving, you've got fruit that remains. I'm going to listen to you different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so are you building with me or are you just criticizing and Comparing. And so, you know, understand that don't even go to your pastor if you haven't actually checked all those other boxes. 
because then I'd ask the question, is he really your pastor or are you going to the church trying to turn his neck? Maybe you need deliverance from Jezebel Ahab go before ahead. you try to go change your pastor, you know? So Ooh, I think yeah. that needs to be yeah. said, you know? It's good. Let's, uh, Daniel, kind of give us from an evangelist standpoint, you know, I traveled for years, but you're, you're with a lot of pastors. Are you seeing an increase of desire in pastors wanting to move in the area of deliverance? You may not be a senior pastor, but you're with a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. I go in, everywhere I go, even overseas. So I'm overseas a lot too. So uh, all these places that I go, these pastors are really, they're like, man, we want this in our church. We want what you have. We want you to bring this into here. They're not really fighting it either. They, they literally on. say these words to me. I meet new pastors all the time and they always say to me, you have free reign. We're going to watch just let us know how to do this. We're not going to limit you. We're not going to put restraints on you. You know, back in the day, they would when you go into a pastor's church, I've been doing it since 2013. When you go into a pastor's church, they'll kind of restrain you. You know, we don't want much of this. And if this breaks off, we're going to have this team member take this back here because it's too much. We don't want families and kids getting scared. It ain't none of that anymore. Now everybody's like, hey, have free reign. We can't stop it. We want to know how it works. We want to see it up front. So just have fun. So that's what I'm running that's into. Good. Come Amazing. on. I hate to be the guy that says it as well. I want to add this. The old guard in a literal sense is dying off. And I'm not saying that yeah. I'm not trying to be malicious or rude. I'm not wishing death on anybody, but the old guard that would say deliverance isn't for today, the big time, let's just be honest, reformed communities are getting older. Their congregations are extremely old. And that whole movement of God can't move today. This is no longer is really dying off. And these young people are like, we want to see what Jesus did in the Bible happen today. We're in bondage. The level of darkness is much higher than it was 20, 30 years ago. And so I, I totally think that we're living in a generation where the old guard, again, not wishing yeah. anyone would die or death, but that generation, like you said, hey, yeah. you can't go into the promised land until everyone 20 and whatever you, uh, over dies. That generation's dying off. That was that religious guard that wanted to stop the move of God. I think there's a remnant raising up that wants it. And there's yeah. a bunch of older pastors that want it. I'm not here to throw out any older yeah. pastors. There's some older pastors that are on yep. board, loving it on fire. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's, it's totally happening. Okay, what do you guys think about this criticism? So we talked about the church churches how do we confront we've been talking about the movie tickets are in the comments i'll keep saying it for those of you that keep asking in the chat we are live so i get it new people are coming in make sure you guys get a ticket what about people they see our movie they see all of us preaching about deliverance by the way just let me just say this we don't only preach on deliverance every single one right. of us have pretty much every topic under the sun on our channel. So if you come in here and some of you have like, all you guys talk about is deliverance, that's completely false. That's that's bearing false witness. Every single right. one of us preach a full balanced gospel. We all preach on repentance. We all preach on salvation. We all preach on the blood. We all preach on holiness. We cover all topics, fasting, prayer, mm -hmm. reading the yeah. word, Bible study. So it's not just deliverance, but what about these people that say you guys bring too much glory to the devil? Cause you talk about deliverance so much, deliverance ministry, brings glory to Satan and his kingdom. Don't talk about it. What would be your guys' response to that criticism? Well, that's what the devil wants. He wants to remain invisible. Yeah, right? That's the biggest lie that we don't need it. Shouldn't talk about it. You empower the devil when you talk about it. Oh, no, you don't. You take away his power when you talk about him because mm. it's two kingdoms colliding. So when you take a kingdom of invisibility and you bring it out into the open, the kingdom of Jesus always triumphs over it. And he doesn't want that. And so that's just a lie. The enemy is all that is. We should talk more and more and more about it. But like you said, we're not always talking about deliverance. I tell folks yep. at Global Vision, where I pastor here in Nashville, Deliverance is what we do, but it's not necessarily who we are, yeah. right? It's not who we are. Our identity is in Jesus Christ, in the death, the burial, the resurrection. That's the power. That's the hope and glory of the world. But we have to do deliverance because it's an effect of the gospel. If the gospel is effectively being preached, the deliverance is going to transpire. Healing is going to transpire. It's just part of it. And so it's not glorifying the devil. It's lifting up Jesus because power is in the name of Jesus. And so... It's really a moot point. It's just something that people want to argue about. It just sounds cute and theological. Well, if you talk about the devil, you give him glory. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> no, you his glory. you're giving glory to Jesus because you're proving that Jesus is more powerful than the devil because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So don't get me started preaching. Praise and God. I, no, preach it. I think people that say that, 
clearly have mm -hmm. never done deliverance because Absolutely. I've, you guys could correct me. I've never been in a, in a deliverance where after the deliverance happens, everyone's like, praise Satan. We glorify yeah. you, Satan. We worship you, <laughs> devil. Like the effect of deliverance is the devil's a loser. He's a liar. And he and literally, yeah. I'm not even defaming him. He lost right now, like in a real sense, he lost. Praise Jesus. The Bible says when demons were cast out, there was a, an awe, a wonder, and a fear yeah. that hit the crowd. And then I love what Acts 8 says. There was great joy in the city. So there wasn't right Satan worship. There wasn't devil worship. Because if that's your logic, your reasoning and your logic, that if we talk about the devil, we're going to bring him glory, then that means after deliverance, people would be glorifying and praising the devil when that's never happened. It's actually the adverse effect. People go, wow, God, you're so strong. You're so powerful. You have authority over the devil's kingdom. So yeah, I would say, man, the only one that gets glory and deliverance is Jesus. What is your guys' thoughts? Anyone else want to jump in here? You know, for those of you that are watching, just understand what you see us teaching and preaching online is only a small fraction of the totality of what we do outside yeah. of social Come media. On. Don't allow social media to tunnel vision you and pigeonhole us into this, that this is all we talk about. If you go to all of our Sunday services, um, you will find that yep. deliverance is the least thing that we're talking about. We're preaching on other topics um, that are around the world. If you go to Pastor Greg Locke's uh, messages, I think the me message he was preaching on this Sunday was uh, losing the presence of Jesus. Come on, you go to my Sunday service, I'm preaching on apologetics. I'm over here defending the faith. You go to Pastor Mike's and Vlad, like online is an online yeah. ministry, but at the church, you know, we're preaching about other topics of the kingdom. And it just happens to be that when we come online, well, our ministries online, a, a, a large portion of it is dedicated to deliverance, but it's not the sum total of what we're teaching and preaching outside of social media. We're preaching and teaching the whole full counsel of God. You guys are just getting consistently, at least online, uh, one particular topic that we've been graced to do a little bit more effectively that we enjoy teaching and preaching on because the need is there, but yes. it's not the total of what we're teaching and preaching all the time. I, I'm, I'm glad you said the need is there. That's, a, I think, a big reason why we've emphasized on, on it at times because other people aren't. We've all famously said, oh, we'll stop talking about it when your pastor starts talking about it. Because the thing is, they're not talking about it. I, I have people come in and I'm like an hour and a half in. I'm doing verse by verse through like the book of John. People will be like, is all you talk about is demons? I'm like, dude, I'm literally an hour and a half in. I haven't even said one word. I'm doing verse by verse. But again, these people come in and they troll and they say these things when in reality, all of us are preaching the full counsel of God. It's of course not just about deliverance and demons. Such a good point, Pagani. Anyone else want to add in before we move on? I was saying this to my congregation on Sunday. If you go to the doctor and they tell you that you're deficient in vitamin D, Preach. they don't give they don't give you a normal daily dosage of vitamin D. They mega dose you. Yeah. And so you end up getting 10,000, 20, 30, 40,000 units. Why? Because if something in your body's deficient, the mega dose brings it up to homeostasis. So right now this movie's needed, our platforms are needed, and a mega dose is needed because deliverance got deleted out of the gut gospel in the last hundred years. Yes. And so all we're doing is bringing the body of Christ from a place of deficiency into a place of homeostasis balance, you know? And so sometimes we might have to overemphasize it because yep. all of y'all under emphasize it for so long. And so that's how I look at it. Like, just look at us as, uh, you know, God's response to a deficiency in mm. the body. That's so good. I always say the two people that hate deliverance are demons and religious people and do not be either one of those. Those are the only ones that hate it. So if you hate it, uh, you need to get delivered and saved. What about people that say, you know, you need a special calling or anointing? Like a lot of people in the chat are watching this. They're, they're just normal Christians on Sunday and they go and they, they're like, we love what you guys do, but our goal is not look to us. You love what we do. Our goal is you can also do this. So what is your guys' thoughts on the criticism of you guys shouldn't be teaching this. This is only for certain elite special forces, Navy SEALs. This is not for every believer. It's very dangerous if you teach. And I've heard this a million times. It's very dangerous if you teach Christians to do this. It's only for the elect. Uh, give me some of your guys' thoughts on that. I would just tell them to read the Bible and you'll be, <laughs> like read like literally read the New Testament. You'll you and you'll see that there's multiple people that aren't even named. There's even the the when Jesus sent out the seventy, right? There's, I mean, there's so many people with no names that were casting out demons, coming back saying, "Hey, look, Jesus, the demons are obedient to us in your name." 
they come out, they're able to be cast out. So, and that was before the cross. I mean, people even don't even put that in there sometimes. That's even before the cross. So they, they were moving in authority using Jesus' name even before the cross. So I don't think the special grace was quite there except through the name of Jesus Christ and the authority that was given. But I will say this. This is my opinion now. Um, when I say my opinion, that means that's open, dis- <laughs> open discussion. I got, I got to be careful. Uh, I do believe there are people graced just like with anything else with greater degrees of things. You know, there's a greater grace for people in healing. There's greater graces for people in miracle working gifts and deliverance from what the Bible tells me is a miracle working gift. So there is greater graces, but everybody can heal the sick. Everybody can cast out demons. It was one third of Jesus's ministry. All the disciples did it. Everybody did it. So I believe that there's no there's no arguing room. There's no wiggle room there. It's for everybody. The Bible mm-hmm. teaches, you know, alongside of uh, Daniel, what you mentioned. The Bible says that the fivefold ministry, the purpose of it, is to equip the saints for the Come work on, of yeah. ministry. So if um, truly the past, the pastor is anointed, that means that his anointing is supposed to equip believers not to do. Not for him to do all the ministry and say, look at me, Mm -hmm. but actually to empower believers. So if believers don't know how to do it, the pastor's job is to equip them, is to Mm -hmm. teach them, to demonstrate them. And so, and I think a lot of times what pastors do is they do it themselves. They don't share this responsibility and this calling with other people. They don't actually equip. Instead, they hide that away and they, like Jesus says, they take the key and they don't let anybody enter Come on. and they themselves sometimes don't enter. So I think that we have responsibility as pastors, not just to do the work of deliverance, but to equip our churches to do the same. Yeah. That's good. Hey, the Bible says in Mark 16, all you have to do is believe. I'm like, well, maybe you don't do yeah. it because you don't believe. I mean, it doesn't say a special apostle or prophet. It's not a gift mm-hmm. of the spirit. It's just you don't believe. And, and when you believe, you're going to start seeing these things. So rather than criticize, start believing. Rather than demonize, start believing. Rather than say, oh, you guys do it wrong. Well, then show me how to do it. And the answer is usually like they don't do it. So they, they say everything else is wrong. But I'd really challenge somebody, start believing. There's no, I think right now in the era we're in, there's no excuse for not doing it. There's so much, there's more resource now than there's ever been of videos. You could literally just Google any of our names and you'll find how to do deliverance, how to do this. What if the demon, I mean, we've exhausted every topic. We have hours and hours and hours of like everything you can think of. So to say, I can't do it or I don't have what it takes. It's time to just get up and do it. God's called you to do it. What do you guys think about this criticism? People tell us, why do you let the demons manifest? I don't let demons manifest. I just cast them out and they come right out. For for they might see some of our videos and they might see eccentric manifestations of the demons and they're like just don't let the demon do that. What do you guys think about that criticism? What's your response to that? I got a funny story. Uh, I had a team member before a mass deliverance that I was conducting actually tell me and all of the other team members <laughs> arrogantly, well, I don't I don't let demons manifest. I, I say I bind them. They stop manifesting and that's it. So obviously I corrected her in front of everyone and I said, you know, I can't wait to see how powerful you are <laughs> when we go out there because I've been doing this all over the world since the late 90s and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know. And so we get out there she immediately encounters a demon this person's manifesting like crazy she's repeatedly saying i bind you it's not working and then that person who's wearing steel toe boots actually kicks her and rips her toenail right off of her of her toe and she comes over me with a bloody foot saying pastor mike i don't know if i can continue the mass deliverance and i said well why don't you sit this one out and and let us finish it so you know uh, the people who say i don't let demons manifest either have done very few so in other words their sample set is so small that it's anecdotal evidence you know okay you did three deliverances and you said i bind you and they stopped manifesting your sample set's too small Mm. you know you that's not good data right or you've never done it but there's another category which you is you do it all the time and then you stop saying foolish things like that preach yeah and and sometimes pastor mike you know, they, those people that they claim they delivered end up in our meetings manifest. Yes, yes. <laughs> you demons yeah. love to hide. They love to play possum. Yeah. I just I think, say they, they don't respect what you carry. That's what I'd say. Yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah, and I think our goal is not the manifestations, it's the freedom. So like, we're not trying to make yeah. it eccentric. It just is when demons manifest. And if you go look yeah. at the scripture, the seven specific instances, 
that parallel throughout the Gospels. They were very dramatic often. There was a boy foaming at the mouth. They all thought he was dead. He fell over. He was shaking. He was screaming. Mm-hmm. Mark 1, the man screaming in the synagogue. Did Jesus say, you know, well, we're not... So there's these manifestations all throughout the scripture where demons are manifesting. The man at the tombs, Jesus commands the demon to leave. The demon doesn't leave. It's talking to Jesus. Jesus conversates with the demon. The demon starts negotiating with Jesus. Will you just let us go to the pigs? Like they're trying to negotiate. So I think this whole idea of, well, don't let it be dramatic. We're not trying for it to be dramatic. We're not trying to make people scream and shout. It's just what demons do. If you go to Acts chapter eight, yeah, demons are extremely dramatic. You want to talk about, you thought your, your kids were drama. The demons are extremely dramatic. Acts eight, they were screaming as they left their victims. So it's like, why is there screaming in your gatherings? That's a beautiful sound. The screaming is demons leaving people. That's like amazing. If your church doesn't have that, I mean, what are you guys actually doing? For real though, that was a sound of freedom in Acts chapter eight when Philip was doing mass yeah. deliverance. And I hear people say, well, mass deliverance isn't biblical. I'm like, dude, Acts chapter eight, Philip was literally doing mass deliverance in front of a huge crowd. Many people had demons cast out of them. So I think these, a lot of these criticisms people send in are people that just aren't educated or don't do deliverance or don't know the scripture. People say, oh, you're a heretic. It's like, how could Satan cast out Satan? They accuse Jesus over and over again of having a demon. And yet Jesus was like, how could I be casting out demons if I have a demon? I would be more worried that people are heretics that don't cast out demons. Because I'm like, I don't even know who you are then. I mean, because I know if you cast out devils, you're not of the devil. But I don't know about you because you haven't cast anything out. The only thing you've cast out is people out of your church that believe in deliverance. Like, (laughs) that's the only thing you cast out. You cast out people. So we need to start casting out demons and stop casting out people. What are some other, I want to open it up as well for you guys and get some dialogue. And we're going to go a couple more minutes and we're going to pray. Uh, By the way, guys, some of these guys literally left meetings and they have meetings right now going on at their church, at their leaders, and they're waiting, people are waiting on them to get on this call. So we're not going to do our three hour usual, but we are going to take a few more minutes here and we're going to pray. I'll, I'll, I guess I could just lead the prayer after, but what are some other things we could touch on that are criticisms that you guys constantly here uh, that people are dealing with that maybe we can help them with? Well, one of the biggest ones I get, especially from pastors, is when you're letting these demons manifest, you're talking to them, and that is unscriptural because you know that the devil's a liar, John 8, 44, Come on. and devils never tell the truth. Well, first of all, you'll never show me one time in the New Testament that they ever told a lie because True. even a lying spirit will tell the truth when you get it under the authority of the name of Jesus. And I find it interesting that every time Jesus told them to shut up, it wasn't because they were lying. It's because they were telling too much truth about who he was Come before on. the time of revelation was supposed to be. And so they're like, oh, these demons always lie. I'm like, well, I think you ought to interrogate these demons because they're like little school kids. They will tell on each other. And yeah. when you find which one is the gatekeeper, you can open that gate and the rest of them will just come right out. I'm telling you. So all these people that say, well, I don't think you ought to let you know demons manifest. I think it's more of what Daniel said. They don't have enough authority to make a demon manifest is what the problem mm-hmm. is. Yeah, come on with it. Another uh, thing that I've seen is people say, well, it's dangerous to conduct a deliverance in a public setting because demons can jump from the people that are being delivered onto people that are there in the sanctuary. And uh, every person that I know who have done deliverance and who have exposed the kingdom of darkness by revealing the open doors, will you will never find one person who will tell you that one of the open doors of a demon entering in is being in a holy place Come where on. the power of God is present. It's witchcraft, uh, generational curses, but experiencing or witnessing deliverance does not get you a demon. And so if it's not safe to be a part of a service where the power of God is manifesting and the kingdom of God Come is on. being made evident and deliv- delivering people, then why doesn't the same idea being applied to healing? You know, is it safe to experience healing? Doesn't sickness jump from one person to another? Um, does, is it safe to observe person coming to the altar, crying, weeping and receiving Jesus? Um, doesn't their sin just jump from them into another? And so we, we don't apply that idea to all other things. But when it comes to deliverance, we hide behind these very mm. traditions of men. They That's are true. not grounded in the scriptures yeah. and they're actually excuses that our fears tell us so that we don't have to do deliverance. That's so good. I had a guy last week say, well, my pastor said that you guys' meetings, demons are going to jump from people to people. I'm like, dude, demons don't play leapfrogs. Demons are not jumping from person to person. It's not scriptural. It's not biblical that a demon is going to jump off of one person onto another person. And what I think 
often happens, and this is why you might think that, because you're like, no, I was in a meeting and a demon jumped on me. I'm going to tell you what happened. You had a demon you didn't know about. You saw them manifest, and your demon reacted to their demon. Because what happens is, I call it like a, a chain reaction. When you're in mass deliverance, if you have a demon and the person next to you starts manifesting, the demon in you gets nervous and starts manifesting as a chain reaction. And you think, oh, their demon jumped on me. No, their demon didn't jump on you. You've had that thing since you were five years old. You just didn't realize you had a critter on board, and that critter was being exposed because he saw his friends getting kicked out of their house. So that's often the misconception. Why well, I, I had a demon jump on me during one of your videos? No, you're not going to get a demon from watching people receive a miracle. Jesus said yeah. deliverance is a miracle. So watching a miracle, and that answers another question I was going to ask that I forgot to was, am I going to get a demon from watching this movie? No. You might get a demon watching all these demonic Marvel movies y'all are at, and I won't even go into that because I don't want to make anyone mad, but you're not going to get a demon from watching a movie called Come Out in Jesus' Name. You might lose a demon. You might go Come in on, and lose. You might lose. Now, if you like your demons, I wouldn't go watch it because you might lose some, but you're definitely yep. not going to gain one. You're going to gain spiritual authority. You're going to gain spiritual understanding, and you're going to gain a hunger to see people get free. Because one of the things I think I've seen is leaders are out of touch with the bondage people are in. When you're out there talking against deliverance, you are out of touch. People are hurting and in bondage, and they need deliverance. Mm -hmm. Any closing remarks you guys want to give before we pray for everyone? I want to respect everyone's time. I know you guys have meetings that are, are waiting as well. Um, we'll pray for everyone. Is there any closing remarks or anything you guys want to say about the movie before we pray? No, everyone's Go good. Listen, Go all right, hold on. Every... Let me... Yeah. Nah, Go no, ahead. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Here's a closing remark. Everybody watching this, get tickets wherever yeah. you are to come out in Jesus' name. And you can go to Pastor Greg's website, comeoutinjesusname.com, and find the theater nearest to you and buy tickets. Everybody watching this, buy tickets tonight wherever you are, in whatever state, wherever you're located. And we're going to try to do another one of these, hopefully, before the movie to blast it again and do an update with the updated trailer, our updated thoughts of what's happening as well. But also, for all of you that say Isaiah talks too much, I give the, I'm like, hey, who wants to talk? And so don't get mad at me, y'all. If you all don't talk, I'm going to be Hispanic and Italian and talk more. <laughs> Let us pray for everybody, though. We want to make sure we pray a prayer of deliverance. Our goal tonight was to really get you guys the movie info and then talk about some criticism here. And then again, we've gone an hour and 10 minutes. Usually we go three hours, but tonight we have some stuff going on. Everyone's super busy. Uh, Pastor Greg, I can't imagine how busy you are with the movie, but I want to make sure before we get off, if you guys don't mind, I just want to pray over everybody that's listening and just pray a prayer of deliverance. Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, that deliverance is the children's bread. Father, I thank you right now that you are delivering your people, that you are setting the captives free, that your word says that you've been anointed to proclaim liberty to those that are in bondage and those that are captive. So tonight, in Jesus' name, we come against every foul, unclean, demonic spirit. Satan, you have no power. You have no authority. The Lord rebukes you. In Jesus' name, we come tonight and we command you to leave these people. They are not your home. They do not want you. You must come up and out according to the word of God. Every yeah. unclean spirit must come up and out now in Jesus' name. We come against every spirit of infirmity. We come against every spirit of addiction. We come against every spirit of suicide, every spirit of anger, bitterness, confusion. We come against you now. You have no power. You have no yeah. authority. We bind you now. Every strong man, you are bound in Jesus' name. And we yeah. call you up and out now. Leave. Leave our children. Leave our marriages. Leave our families. We sever every generational yeah. curse. We sever every generational tie. We command the spirit of religion to come up and out now that's kept us in bondage, that's kept us right now uh, lazy and complacent. We pray, Lord, that you would deliver us from the spirit of laziness. The spirit of complacency. Yeah. Father, yes. we pray that there would be a deliverance movement rising up in America that no yeah. one can stop. We pray, Lord, that your people shall cast out devils because your word says they will. We pray yeah. your people shall prophesy. We pray, God, that the fire of the Holy Spirit would touch every single person listening right yeah. now in Jesus' name. Lord, yes. we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. It is not about us. It is all about you. Jesus, yes. be glorified in your church. Jesus, be glorified in America. We pray, Lord, that deliverance would break out in America. We don't just want it in Africa or in India, but we want to see a deliverance mm -hmm. revival in America. I pray for I every you. pastor 
Pagani, would you pray for pastors listening right now that deliverance would break out in their church? I know there's pastors in the chat saying, do it in my church, Lord. Would you just pray that deliverance would break out in some of these churches that are listening? Heavenly Father, we are asking, Lord, that every shepherd, every overseer, every bishop, Lord, yes. every cell group, home church leader, Lord, anyone that you've ordained, Father, to shepherd your people, Lord, that have people looking to them for spiritual guidance, Lord, in the in the scriptures, Father. I'm praying, Lord, that you would awaken their spirit, Father, yes. that you would awaken their mind to this revelation of deliverance. Father, show them the blueprint of deliverance, Lord. Send revival to their churches, send an awakening to their yes. churches. Yes. Lord, remove all fear, disbelief, and doubt, Lord. Increase courage and boldness for them, Lord, to yes. step into this unfamiliar territory, Father, especially in this season, Lord, that you're going to do with this movie, Father. Yes. You've given them yeah. instead with this movie to explore and go down this territory of deliverance, Father. And we're praying, Lord, that they would be infused with boldness mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit, according to Acts yeah. chapter 4, when they were refilled with boldness, Lord. Lord, fill them, Lord, now in the name of Jesus. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. God is moving. Amen. Guys, be excited for what God is doing. Please get your tickets. Buy out your tickets there down below in the comments. Also, if you want to sow into the ministry, everybody has links to give. You can go to any of the websites. This is not about, oh, you have to give to me and none of that. Give wherever you feel led to give. God is providing for all of our ministries. Make sure you guys get to these events. Get to this, to this movie. It's going to be, oh man, I'm so excited. It's going to be powerful. I literally, I'm counting down the days for this movie to come out. Awesome. I'll stay on and, and talk to the people a bit and take up some donations but anything else you guys want to say any closing remarks before we get you guys off awesome all right love you guys i'll talk to you guys soon